Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Today, I'm going to talk to you about your heart. The Lord is going to talk to you about your heart. And so be ready, all right? Just be ready. I don't know uh, where you're at, but I want, I want you to be ready for the Lord to speak to your heart, okay? So we're going to look at 1 John. That's towards the end of the, the, New, the New Testament. If you go all the way to the end of the Bible and come back a few books, you'll find uh, 1 John uh, chapter 3, uh, verses 14 through 16. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And so if you have a Bible today, we, we, we at Breakthrough Church like to read out loud. Okay? And I uh, also think it's important that you, you, you know, find a pen and a piece of paper and try to take a note. Try to listen to what God is going to say to you today. And uh, 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Uh, and so we're going to jump right into that. You're, if you have it, say amen. amen. I don't want to read without you. So if you got a Bible, we're going to read together, okay, with your outside voice. If you don't read loud enough, I'll stop and make you do it again. Because <laughs> I believe it's important. It's so important that you read the Word of God. Amen? Not just on Sunday morning with Pastor Everett makes you, holds you accountable, but when, we, when, you're, when you're all by yourself. And you should do it when you get up in the morning. Do it first thing in the morning. And, and that, that's how we establish our relationship with God. So 1 John 3, 14 through 16. Are you ready? Yes. All right, one, two, three. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Can I just stop you for a second? You have to decide which side of the fence you're on. You have to decide today. Say that with me. I will decide. I will decide, I will decide today. Amen? So in verse 15, it says, Whosoever hateth, come on, read with me. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Can I give you a side note before I give you the next verse? Side note. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, 6 through 8 says, And he said unto me, the Spirit of God, Jesus, said unto John, the revelator, he said unto him, It is done. I am the Alpha. Say that with me. It is done. It is done. It is finished. It's over, right? It's already done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst. Woo. I want somebody to be thirsty today. Amen. I want somebody that's thirsty today. Somebody that's thirsty today. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is looking for, somebody that's thirsty today. He says, I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. I'm going to give you something for free. Amen. Amen? And he says, and it said, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And all liars, and all liars, verse 16 in our text, hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for, our, for the brethren. Okay, I love that, that, that word we right there. And the word we, when we began to, to, to read the verse, says we know, right? We know that we have passed from death and life because we love the brothers, right? And then at the end it says we ought to lay down our life for the brothers, right? Laying down our life is a, is a daily task and a lifelong journey. Life for life. Say that with me. Life. Little L life for life 
big L life. Life for life. Life for life. <laughs> There's three words that, that I highlight in my Bible. It's, it's love, okay? Love is something that we have to give away. Love somebody, amen? Love somebody, amen? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Don't just love yourself. Right. Love somebody else, amen? Amen, that's, that's, a, that's a sign that something inside of you is greater than you, amen? When you can love somebody else, amen? So love, I highlighted, and I, then I, I put this other word, abide, abide. Abide where? In Christ. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. And then the, the last word is perceive, okay? Perceive. Perceive God's provision, okay? Sometimes we perceive all of the negative things in our life. We perceive that nothing's ever going to get better. It's always going to be the way it is. But I want you to per perceive God's provision for your life. Amen? So let's pray. Father, we thank you right now for the word of God. I thank you for the presence of the Lord in this room. I thank you, Lord, that hearts are open. Minds are awake today. Eyes are, are loose, God. Ears are unstopped today, Father, that we can see hear, know, and understand something brand new from the Word of God. And we thank you right now for a fresh move of God in us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Woo! Woo! That was some good preaching right there. I didn't even get started yet, but that's some good preaching. And so I, I want to talk to you today about, uh, about uh, the fence in our life, okay? Whether it's the defense or the offense, okay? Uh, some of us like football, and uh, I like football, and uh, I, I, I don't know, most people like the, the high score games, but I like the ones where they're, they're, they're battling it out, right? Because you don't know who's going to win. It gets all the way down to the last second before somebody comes out the, the victor, and I, I like those kind of games. And, uh, uh, but I thought I would ask you a couple questions this morning before I get going. Uh, uh, I was, it's kind of a trick question, so yeah, you want to say it out loud. I want you to say it out loud, but I want to ask you, who's your favorite uh, Old Testament prophet? Do you have one? Favorite Old Testament prophet? He's got Elijah over here. Okay. You got another one? <laughs> Samuel. Okay. All right. That's okay. You know who my favorite one is? I'll tell you. It's John the Baptist. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. <laughs> you want to know why? Because he, he was tasked with the job of presenting to the world the Savior, the Lord, the, the God, God in the flesh. Amen. And so that, that's my favorite one right there. He, he, he prepared the way, right? He prepared the way. He, he revealed the true God. That's what the Spirit of, Spirit of Elijah does, right? He, he, Elijah came to reveal to the children of Israel the, the true God. That's why, that's why he, he, uh, he went up on a mountain where there was 400 and some odd other prophets, right, of Baal. And, uh, and here's Elijah all by himself, okay? And he said, you guys go first. There's more of you. And, and, and yet the, the real God answered with fire, amen? Yeah. Woo! He answered with fire. I like that. I like that story. I like that story for lots of reasons because we see the supernatural power of God moving, amen? And we see the... The provision, the thing that, that the people needed most, the water, that's what they took and put over the fire. Before the fire came, they poured water. Not just one, but two. Not just two, but three. They poured three times. They filled the, the whole trench around the, the sacrifice. But, but God didn't want no wet offering, right? He wanted, a, he wanted a dry offering. So he sent fire that consumed water. Fire that, that transformed life. It transforms the lives today, too, of people. Amen? Water just signifies the natural side of things, and fire is the, is the presence of, a, of the living God who, who comes to live inside of you. Amen? Touch yourself right here. Just touch yourself right here. And say, God is there. God is here. Amen? God is here. He is able. I don't know the rest of the song. <laughs> but He's here. Amen? Amen? And then I want to ask you another question. Okay? It's kind of a, it's kind of a, a, a trick question, too. Uh, but I want to ask you this question. Uh, who is the greatest liar in the Bible? <laughs> Who, who's the greatest liar in the Bible? This is a good, this is a good question, Pastor Everett. It's a good question. That's good. Go ahead. Huh? Peter, Peter lied. He said, I don't know who that man is. Right? He said it three times. Not once, but three times, right? Yeah, he was a liar. Okay. That's a good one. Okay. Anybody else? What is, so, so, so think... 
<laughs> See, I told you it was a trick question because we, we know that the devil, okay, is the greatest liar in the Bible, okay? And it isn't your ex-pastor. <laughs> uh, it could even be you. Come on now. Because <laughs> you, better, you better be in the Bible too, right? Better get up in the Bible. Sometimes we lie. Come on now, we do. All right, if we're really honest about it, I, I'm a holy and I never lie. I'm a, I'm a perfect man, right? <laughs> I never get discouraged. I never, I never get misunderstood. You know? And so we've got to get to this place, right? We've got to get to this place where we acknowledge that all lies come from the devil. Amen? Woo. But provision comes from the Lord, right? Amen? Woo! Woo! Man, you're preaching good today, Pastor Everett. Woo! See, but we got to get off the fence, right? Uh, a life, right? For a life. I like to say it different, Lowell. Live out life. L O L. <laughs> Live out the life that God has given you, right? Live it out. L O L. Hashtag L O L. Right? Live it out, though. Live out the life that God. Did God really give you something? Did he really put something in you that's bigger than you? Did he? Did he really? Or do we still listen to the lies of the enemy in our life? No. Uh, do we? Do we? Because see, see, some people can say that. I mean, maybe if they were like 10 or, or 8 or 7 or 6, they might say, oh yeah, oh, God is bigger than anything. But some of us have gone through some stuff. Some of us are going through some stuff sometimes. Amen? Some of us are in the middle of some of the things we don't understand right now, and we don't have the answer. But I want to ask you the question, is what God put in you bigger than what you're facing? See, because the answer to that question really is, well, is how we're living it, right? How we're honoring God in the, mo in the very moment, right? And sometimes it's a moment-by-moment -moment thing, yeah. right? I was talking to a young man just yes yesterday, and he said he was, he was on his way doing, doing what he was supposed to be doing. He was working, and the Lord spoke to him. And the Lord spoke to him not once, not twice, but three times before he acknowledged that it was the voice of God and said, it's not that he didn't know God was speaking, it's that he was being disobedient until the third time, okay? And, and so just because, just, I wonder how many of us have heard the voice of the Lord many times and never gone back and done what we were told, amen? Never, never been obedient, never came and gave our life to the Lord, never came and gave our relationships to God, never came and gave our finances to the Lord, never came and gave that business, never came and gave our sister to the Lord, never came and gave our, our father to the Lord, never came and gave the circumstance that we'll never understand, doesn't ever make sense in your life, and we never give all that stuff to God because we're just stuck, right? We're just stuck thinking in the same circular pattern, the spiral of defeat, right? It's like, I, I had a good church service today, but I, got, I walk out the door and I start thinking again, and I was thinking again, and I'm thinking again, and I keep going down and deep back into the abyss of what I can never make sense of in my life. And the truth is, is that we must give that to the Lord too. Amen? Otherwise, you will always have that face, right? That Pastor Clay was talking about yesterday at Bible study, right? That face of defeat, okay? but we're supposed to have joy. Amen? We're supposed to have hope and, and dreams. You know, one of the, <clears throat> one of the most uh, the funniest uh, lying stories that, I, uh, that they ever had on YouTube, but maybe you heard it before, it's called, it's a, a little boy, he's standing there talking to his mom, and he stole some cupcakes, and he's about to get some uh, spankings and pow pows on his butt, and he said, listen, Linda, <laughs> If you may remember that or not. He said, listen, Linda, listen, Linda. And he was trying to, to get himself out of trouble, but he was creating more trouble for himself instead of just listening, right? And just saying, yes, yes ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I was wrong. Amen? Like the Fonzie, right, on Happy Days. He'd say, I was, whoa, 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 whoa. He couldn't say it, right? Listen, Linda. Or we, we even do, do worse, right? We go and uh, we talk about people behind their back. And then we say this little phrase at the end, bless their little heart. You ever do that? Ah, I like, I like Pastor Clay. If he wasn't so ugly, bless his little heart. <laughs> I, I, like, I, like, I, like, I like my mother-in-law. Bless her little heart. <laughs> I, I like my boss. Bless his little heart. 
I like the person I work with, bless their little heart, okay? You know, and, and so we get these, these areas, right? I guess the real question that we should be asking is, how is your love life? How is your love life? How is your love life? How much do you love the Lord? How much do you love the Lord? How much are you willing to give the Lord of yourself? Just pieces of it? Just parts of it? Or all of it? All of my life? All of it. See, I want to, be, I want to give God all of it. So, so, so often our life is built around defending or building the barricade around the offended positions of our life, right? We're either defending or we're keep the fence up, right? Because we're offended, right? There's a lot of people who use anger to keep people away from them because they don't want the person to really know that they're really a nice person, that they really are a lover, right? That they really are good. So they use anger to push people away so they, they, don't, have to have an excuse, they don't have to have another friend. They, they save themselves a lot of heartache that way because they don't have to have another relationship that would cost them their heart that would cause them to get up in the middle of the night and go and pray for somebody, right? It, they don't want that, so they, 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 they use excuses, right? But I love the Lord today more than I love my excuses. I love the Lord today more than I love the offenses that have happened in my life. I love the Lord today more than I, my desire to, is to defend myself, amen? I'm going to trust God with all that I have. Right? So in Pro Proverbs uh, uh, 6, verse uh, 17 through 19, it says, uh, out of the Passion Translation, it says, putting others down while considering yourself superior, spreading lies and rumors, spilling the blood of the innocent, plotting evil in your heart towards another, gloating over doing what is plainly wrong, spouting lies and false testimony, and stirring up strife between friends, these things are despicable to God. Actually, in the King James Version, it says God hates, God hates these six things, right? The number six being, the, uh, that, that's the thing that all, all man does, right? Six is being the number of a man. And so we, we, are, we are always uh, hating, we're always doing these things, but God hates some of the stuff we do. Amen? He hates it. And so, so God hates those things, <laughs> But we are, we are to be giving away the same love that we receive. Amen? Same love we receive. But, but, but given our forgiven state, right, we should be demonstrating love. Demonstrating love. Okay? Demonstrating love. Demonstrating love for God is not just a worship thing uh, on a, in a church service. It is, a, uh, uh, it, it is a, a, a thing that we continue out into Monday. Okay? Demonstrating the love of God is what happens when someone, uh, you know, slaps you on the, on the right side, <laughs> okay? Yeah, you turn your other cheek and let them slap the other side, okay? And, and not be so defensive about it, all right? Allow the love of God to touch that person, okay? I'm not saying that you don't have to advocate for yourself, but I'm saying you must, you must trust God, trust His way, and be loving, okay? All right? Oh, that sounds great, Pastor. I, I like this message so far because it's really great. Really great. I can do that. I can do that. I can love, I can love my neighbor. Amen? So, so, this is the same message that we've heard from the beginning. Uh, in John, uh, first back in our text. It's the same message that we heard from the beginning. This is not a new message. This message has been spoken over and over and over again. Most of us are like, right now, at this point in the message, say, I heard all of that before. I, I've heard all that before. This is the same message. It's the good news of the gospel, right, that we really need in our life, and it's the same thing we need to give away, right? James 3.14 says, but if, there is, but, it, but if you have any envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth, right? Strife, envy, equal world, right? It equals the world. It equals the world. I'm letting the world affect me. I'm not letting the Spirit of God affect me, okay? I, I want the Spirit of God to affect me, okay? So that I can go into the world and be different than the world. Instead of letting the world affect me, 
or, and, and then let it change you. The world, the, I've said this a lot of times, said it another way, but the, the devil tries to take everything around you to affect what's inside of you, but God is trying to take what's in you and use it to affect all, that, all the world around you, okay? And so there's a, there's a big difference in, in doctrine. I want you to say that word with me, doctrine. doctrine. Doctrine is a belief system that you have, okay? And the older we get, the harder it is for our belief system to change, okay? It is, okay? Because, uh, you know, like uh, just this last week, uh, 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 I had to celebrate the anniversary of a, a very tragic event in my life, and I had to think and rethink the whole event over and over and over in my mind, okay? So, so I had to give it back to God again, okay? Because I'll never understand it, okay? So I had to give it again to God and say, God, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand, but you understand, God. I'm going to let you be God in this circumstance, in my mind, because it was all in my mind, right? But what, what we start to dwell on in our mind starts to affect our heart, and it starts to affect all, our, all of our relationships, okay? And so we need to make sure that we submit our heart, our mind, and all of that stuff to God so that we can not, not just understand it, okay? Because if we're seeking to understand something that we can never understand, we'll always be misunderstood, <laughs> Okay? From both directions. Okay? But I want to get to a point where I'm free. Amen? I want to be free. And so, <laughs> I was studying for this message, and it says, and, and I, 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 in, in, the, in the Greek, okay, when you look up the word hypocrite, you know what the word means? It means liar. <laughs> That's what it means. So, so most of us, have admitted already that we're a liar. <laughs> so that means that we are somewhat hypocritical in some areas of our life, okay? And I, I, I want to challenge you, you know, in, in Spanish, it means liar. <laughs> Hypocrite means liar in Spanish. It means, that, uh, it means liar in, in uh, Chinese too, okay? Hypocrite means that I say one thing and I do another, okay? That's what the word hypocrite means. And so, so when we get to this place where we say, I love you, do we really mean that we love? Not just God, but look at, look at, your, look at your relationships in your life. Can you say, I love, somebody, I love you to somebody and not have an ulterior motive? Because if you can't, you're a hypocrite. Okay? You are a liar. Okay? So you're a liar. So, so <laughs> I ain't lying, Pastor Everett. I'm trying. <laughs> uh, see, see, because just trying isn't necessarily mean that you're not lying, okay? Because because if you can't go deeper, uh, deeper than a than a, than an expression, I love you. Uh, have a great day. <sighs> but in my heart, I'm like, mm, I hope I hope the bus hits you on the way out the door. <laughs> Come on now, we got to get to a place where, where there's transparency in my heart. I, I'm on my knees praying before God, but I'm hating my brother. That means, um, we just read it, it says, I, you're like a murderer. Oh, oh, a murderer? A liar is a murderer? Yes, yes. Because there are people dying and going to hell who need you and me to pray for them, to show them, to love them, to teach them. To, to honor God in circumstances that are very troubling. Okay? Okay? And so, so we, can't, we, can't, we can't stay hurt forever. Okay? Even if your mind says you, you, you should. Even if, if the circumstances in your life say that you should, you can't stay hurt. Sometime, somewhere, you've got to get healed. You've got to go from hurt to whole. Okay? You got to go from hurt. And, and I'm not talking about the fake kind of thing that says, you know what, I was hurt 20, I did, and, and then get over here and say, I love God. See, something's got to flow out of you back to the circumstance, okay? All right? Back to the, the, you know, your old pastor who is the liar, the biggest liar in the, in the Bible, <laughs> okay? The one that hurt you or, or, or whatever it was. We got to get to this place where we're willing to give that up to God. See, if we can't give up something to God, how does he ever have your life? Because he really don't have your life. 
He just has a part of your life, and you're still lying to God. You're lying to the Holy Spirit. That's how we grieve the Holy Spirit when we lie to Him. Woo! You say, say, I, I love God, I love God, I love God, I love God. But I got all this stuff over here in my closet at home. I got all this stuff in the basement over there. I got, I got some areas over here that I don't want the Holy Spirit to go there. See, you're grieving the Holy Spirit because you're lying. You're a hypocrite. Oh, this is going to fill the church, Pastor Everett. I like this message. It's going to fill the whole church. Everybody's going to come from miles around to hear this. But this is the truth. This is the truth. And this is what the world needs. The world needs somebody to be real again. To be honest again. To love God with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their soul, with all their spirit, with all their strength, with all their substance, with all their past, with all their future, with all the things that they understand, with all the things they don't understand. With, when, when they got abundance, when they got nothing. Love Him with everything you got. Amen? Because God don't need your stuff anyways. He don't need you. He don't even need Pastor Everett. If, if I was to fall over right now, God would put another person up. Amen? He would, he would find somebody else, just like he did with Moses, right? <laughs> Moses died. He turned his head to Joshua and he said, Joshua, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Get up and go. Let's go take this land over here. Let's go to the promised land, okay? I want to go, I want to, go to the promised land today. Amen. I don't want to stay. I don't want to stay stuck where I am. I want to go to the promised land. I want to go to a new territory. I want to take some new ground. I want to, I want to get to the next thing. Amen. 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 Break the power, Father, of the past in my life. Break it, Father. See, see, we ought to get to a place where we, we see the win in it, right? We see the win. Because if we don't see a win, we're always going to be stuck with the loss of it. There has to be a win. There has to be a win. And it's the Spirit of God. Amen? It's the power of God working in my life. Old things passed away. Oh, all things became new, right? There's a new thing that's going on in, the, in, the, in, in my life today, right? <sighs> Staying hurt is not God's purpose. Through it all. <laughs> Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all. Because I've been through many trials and many circumstances and many things, but through it all, I've learned to trust. I've learned to, to, to stand on His Word. His Word. I've learned to stand on His Word. Getting off the fences, choosing a side. Choosing a side. Am I going to stay hurt? Or am I going to be healed? Oh, I wish it was just simple for me to say, I can make a decision today and I can be healed. But I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to make many decisions sometimes to get to the place called healed where you can stand and say, you know what, I still don't understand it. I can feel the joy of the Lord though because through that, through that experience, through that trial, through that very difficult thing that we can't understand, God will get the glory, amen? Because I'm going to stand up and live again, amen? I'm going to stand up and trust God again. I'm going to stand up and worship Him again. Amen. Right? Up and out. Right. Up and out. Feelings of despair. Up and out. Uh, confusion. Up and out. Lying lips. Whoa. Up and out. Up and out. It's moving day. Whew. It's moving day. Uh, the inner, inner, inner struggles equal outer frames. Inner struggles uh, carry forward into all my other things that I do on the outside, right? When I have an inner struggle, I, I, I carry it with me in the car when I'm driving. I go, I go home, I look in the mirror, and I, I can see the inner struggle on, on my face. I, I got inner struggles equal outer frames because it, it, just, it just goes on out because you can't have a, a good relationship with anybody if you can't ever get to this place where you are, are healed on the inside, right? Where my inner struggle is done, right? It's over, right? Whew. You know, a couple days ago, I had the privilege of going to a, a house and I, I prayed for a young man. He's 88 years old. And I walked into the house and, and on the way in, I, I, I had this, uh, this sense that this day was set up a long time ago. And he, he, here's a guy, 88 years old. 
he's in hospice. And I sat down, he's an intellectual person, and so I, I started talking to him uh, on where, where I felt the Lord was uh, leading me to talk to him from. And I talked to him from John the 8th chapter uh, about the woman who was caught in the very act of adultery. She did a sin, and she needed a Savior. And the law said that she should die. And, and I, I talked to him about the fact that we'll never, in our own works of our flesh, no matter how good we are, no matter how pretty we are, no matter what we ever do, how many sermons we preach, no matter how many times we pray or how many times we worship, we still need a Savior. And I talked to him about the, the fact that he needed a Savior. And, and uh, I began to explain to him uh, this thing. And I, I was just talking like, uh, like I'm talking to you right now. And all of a sudden, I felt in the Spirit that he was ready. And so I said to him, I said, would you like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And he said, yes, I would. And he, he was old, so uh, he can't hear anymore, barely. So I had to get right up by his ear, and I had to, I had to yell the prayer to him. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, Jesus! And he said, Jesus! <laughs> and I said, come into my heart! And he said, come into my heart! I want you to be Lord of all. I want you to be Lord of all, he said. And I got done and I said, in Jesus' name. And he said, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And he, as soon as I got done, the Spirit of the Lord come down. I feel it right now. And he said, he said, I feel him in my heart. I feel him in my heart. I feel him in my heart. I said, I said, woo. There's another one. Hell lost another one that day, amen? Hell lost another one that day. And you know what? I, I, it's okay. He's 88 years old. It's okay. He may not get up out of that bed, but I did pray for him. I said, in the name of Jesus, I pray that God would touch your body. I said, right now, God can heal your body. He can raise you back up out of that head. He can give you 15 more years, Hezekiah. He can give you more time if it's His will. And I said, I believe that the same blood that saved your soul can heal your body. And I told him that. And I, said, and I sat down in a chair. And the Spirit of the Lord said something else to me. He said, he said pray for the house. I sat down in a chair over here. And I said, I said, his name was Bob. I said, Bob, I said, would it be okay uh, if I pray for the house? And he says, what? <laughs> so I spoke up a little louder. I said, do you own this house? And he said, yes, I own this house. And I said, would it be okay if I pray for it? And he said, it would be okay. And so I said, okay. I said, we're in agreement then. And so I went and I prayed. I put oil on every door in and out of that house. And I prayed the peace of God would come into that home. Because the owner said, the peace of God can come. And so we were in agreement, and I set an angel there. I said, minister to this boy. Minister to his body. Minister to the family. Minister, everybody comes in the door. Let them feel the peace of God so that another life can be changed. Amen? Because it's not just about one life. It's not just about me. See, that's what we get all confused. We think it's all about me all the time. And it's really not about you at all. It's about Him. It's about bringing glory to God. It's about giving Him glory sometimes. Amen? Just because you're the vessel He uses sometimes, great. I don't worship the vessel. I worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He reigns. He reigns in all the earth. He reigns. He reigns in the things I don't understand. He still reigns. He's the King. I gave Him my life. He says, go, I go. He says, stop, I stop. He says, pray, I pray. And sometimes you got to pray more than five minutes. Amen? Sometimes you got to pray when you don't understand the end of it. Sometimes you got to pray when He don't even answer your prayer the way you think. You, 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 we, God, you should have done it this way. He doesn't necessarily do it your way. He's looking for your surrender, though. He's looking for my surrender. Our identity is not wrapped up in a hidden agenda. It's wrapped up in the love of God. A God who sent His Son to the earth to die for you. A, a Son who cried in the garden and said, Not my will, God, but yours be done. It was a sacrifice. It was bloody and it was brutal. I, I still got the hurt from 20 years ago. I don't understand it. It's 
time to stop lying. It's time to get off the fence. It's time to stop being offended and defensive. It's time to tear down the fence, right? Kind of like the one that, that God tore down. You know the, the veil in the temple? God reached down and ripped it from the top to the bottom. They say it was, the curtain was about as white as your hand, that thick. And they say if an earthquake would have happened when Jesus died and an earthquake did happen, but if the earth would have shook, the, the, it would have ripped from the bottom up. But it didn't rip that way, it ripped from the top down. It's as if, you know, when, when I used to preach at youth group, I used to, I used to bring in phone books. And I would, I would, I've seen it on the power team. I don't know if you're old enough to know what the power team was, but I used to bring in phone, I, I had people save phone books for me. And I would bring in the phone books and I'd say, and the Spirit of God moved upon <laughs> Samson. <laughs> and I'd take the phone book and I'd go, <laughs> ah, and I'd throw the pages everywhere and make a big mess. And I would say, I would say, I would say, and they'd, they'd all come up and try to do it, you know, and there's a trick to doing it, but it, you have to know the trick. And, and, uh, uh, and so I used to rip phone books for, uh, for just to show, show, show strength, right? I, w- I would show, I would, <laughs> that's what God did. Grabbed hold of the veil and he said, I want to see your face. I want to see your face. Like the children of Israel, Moses would go up on the mountain and he'd come down and Moses' face would shine so bright. They put a veil over Moses' face so that when he talked to them, he had a veil. When he talked to God, he'd take the veil away. And this is, this is what God wants. He wants a relationship where there's nothing separating you between him and, him and us right now. Amen? He wants, he wants nothing separating. No lie. Come on, no disease. No amount of time. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. No amount of time matters with God. I think it's so powerful. I was talking to, to Bob about that too. I said, I said because if you keep reading uh, John chapter 8, get down to around verse 50, uh, 52, 54, 57 area, uh, they're, 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 Jesus is having an argument with the church of the day, the church folks of the day, about Abraham. And Jesus says, I already met Abraham. And he says, he said, I met Abraham. Uh, and, and, they, and they said to him, he says, you're not even 50 years old, they said. How can you uh, have met Abraham? It's impossible for you to have met Abraham. And, and Jesus says, he said, but I have. And if you go to, to James, it says uh, Abraham was the friend of God. The friend of God. Because uh, there was an old man in, in the Old Testament named Melchizedek who was uh, without father, without mother, without beginning, without end. That, that was the foreshadow. That was Christ. Amen. Christ went and shook hands with Abraham in the Old Testament, and Jesus was revealing that to the to church folk of the, of the day in the New Testament. And what, what was happening is uh, uh, God was showing us that He's not a God that's, that's in time in one place. He's all, all, all throughout time. Amen? He's bigger than, than what I understand. He's bigger than what I, I, I agree with or disagree with. He's greater than all of the circumstances. And He can go anywhere, do anything, anytime, uh, however He wants according to His will. And I have to get to a place where I'm willing to accept that. Amen? I, and then I told, I told Bob, I said, you know, it's like, it's like your old dog. You pet your dog and you go out the door and you come back in five minutes and the dog is happy to see you like you've been gone for hours, right? The old dog. See, see because that's what it is. The dog is, a, is man's best friend. But today I want you to, to have a new friend. I want you to have a friend named Jesus. Amen? Right. And our friend named Jesus is not just, didn't just die on a cross. He, just, he wants to take your hand and he wants to take you all the way through this life, all the way through the death and the grave, and he wants to take you all the way through eternity. That's the friend that we have. The one who loves you more than he loved his own life. Ooh. That's the friend. That's the friend. That's the friend we have in Jesus, right? And so, in, in Luke 12, and i got to hurry up, in Luke 12, uh, verses 1 through 3, uh, Jesus talks about uh, bewaring, be, be, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. All right? That's the, 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 the heart, what is in our heart, right? He says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, right? It's called hypocrisy, called lying. Beware of lying. Beware of lying. Get, get yourself in a church, <laughs> 
Where the pastor don't lie. <laughs> Get yourself somewhere where someone starts talking to you about truth, okay? Get yourself somewhere uh, surrounded by people who are going to hold you accountable to truth, amen? Not, not to, to fantasies or fiction, but to truth, amen? Not to emotion it, not emotionalism, okay? Because a lot of worship is about emotion, but truth. That's what you need, truth. You need truth, but before you need anything else, you need to know the truth, amen? Because the truth is what sets you free. The truth sets you free. Nothing else sets you free. Amen? Got to have truth. Got to have truth. The only truth that I know is the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. It's the truth. Uh, so in verse uh, uh, tw- Luke 12, 1 says, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. In verse 2 it says, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. In verse 3 it says, Therefore whosoever, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And I'm going to stop right there, and I'm going to just say this, right? Secrets in heart equals barrier to boldness. Secrets in our heart equals barriers to boldness. Okay? <laughs> Devil, you're a liar. I told you. Mm-mm. Devil, you're a liar. You can go to hell. (laughs) See the difference? See, because most of us won't pray a prayer like that because we're too timid in our hearts because we have secrets. We have secrets. We have secrets. I don't want to bring my secrets to church on Sunday. I want to bring my true worshiping heart, my my open heart to to the Lord on Sundays. Amen? I don't want to bring my secrets to the circumstances of my life. I want to bring an open heart to the Lord, to the circumstances. I want to give him everything. Amen? Amen? Amen. Three things, and I'll be done. I'll shut up. Three things. Number one, the one who does not love remains in death. Say that with me. The one who does not love remains in death. Let's say it again. The one who does not love remains in death. Woo. Turn to your neighbor and say, I love. And I love you. <laughs> Even though you're ugly. <laughs> I was looking at Pastor Clay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on now. All right? So, so love looks like someone else, Okay? Amen? If you need love, start giving love away. Amen? Come on. All right, number two. In John 3, chapter 3, it says, you must be born again. John 3, verse 3, it says, if you're not born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. So we must be born again, okay? We must, we must take on a rebirth, right? We must pass from death to life. From death to life. We must be born again. Say that with me. Born again. again. Say, I want to be born again. again. (laughs) You know, come on now. Because we do. We want to be born again. Born again is is something that I believe in the morning when I get up. I believe the mercy of God is new every day. I I make my relationship new with God every day. I say, say, Father, I know that yesterday I lied. (laughs) I know that yesterday I, I didn't say the right words. I know that yesterday I was disobedient to you, but today... But today, God, I give you my life again today. Amen? You know where I learned that from? I've been married for 37 years. And I found out that being married 37 years isn't good enough. You've got to be married today. You've got, you got to decide today to be married. You've got to decide today to, to be nice. You've got to decide today to listen. You've got to decide today to, to say I love you. You've got to decide today to pick up your socks off the floor. I'm just talking for my own self because I always leave my socks lay on the floor. <laughs> Yesterday I come, I come downstairs after I, because I had to sleep in the living room because we had a, our, our grandkids come over and we were having a camp out on the living room floor and I come down and there are my socks laying in the middle of the floor and I was like, who left their socks on the floor? And I realized it was me. And so, so, so being born again is something that I believe that, uh, yes, it's a one-time experience. You know, there are people that will go out and pray for people. Father, live, Father, my life, blah, blah, blah. And never disciple anybody. Okay? So, so if you never get discipled, most likely the prayer is just words that were spoken. 
okay? But you have to, you, we have a covenant relationship with God, amen? And we ought to give that same relationship to others. There's a, number three is the divine nature. Divine nature. And the best way I can explain this, I'll put this in words for you, the best way I can explain it, you by yourself are like a well, a container. But what, what the whole, when you get uh, reborn, you take on a divine nature, and that divine nature is a spring, okay? That springs up and gives away, gives away, gives away, gives away. It never runs out, never runs out, okay? I don't want to contain the Holy Spirit. I want it to flow through me, amen? I want a flow to happen in me. That happens when we, when we, when we embrace truth and when we get rid of the hypocrisy in our own life, when we get off the fence, when we stop the defensive move, okay? And we start being open, amen, to God and letting him be God and letting a true flow happen, amen? I, I, love, I love new Christians because they don't have all these uh, religious, uh, uh, bureaucratic, political, uh, nightmarish uh, uh, groups that, that get together to try to make everything be the way, that, way it was at their old church, <laughs> Okay, uh, we, got, we, got, we got people that, that are just hungry for God, that just love God, that just want to uh, stand up and worship Him and give it away, give away what they have received, that great gift. And, and I've been serving God for 45 years, but that doesn't matter if I'm not serving Him right now. Amen? I've been doing it a long time. I'm a, I'm a third generation pastor, okay? Uh, I, was a pre, I was a PK growing up, and that don't make me holy. <laughs> hey, don't make me right. Come on now. Uh, it don't, don't make me right. It, 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 it makes me blessed, okay? But, but, it, but it also, I've seen it all. I've seen it all. I've seen stuff you would never want to see. <laughs> I've, I've seen stuff I should never have looked at before in the church house, okay? I've seen all kinds of stuff. And I, I want to tell you that I just want the power of God to move. Get, it, not just in my life, but in, in this, this room, but in the world around us too, Amen. 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 The truth never changes. Never changes. It's always the truth. And, and when, we, when we walk in truth, we don't have to be worried about anything, right? Because we're in the truth. We're in the light. I'm in the light right now. You can see every blemish on my face. There's probably not very many. It's pretty good. But I'm not hiding anything, okay? Amen? That's what walking in the light is like. We, we walk in the light, we now hide the things, okay? That's why I'm talking about tearing down a fence, amen? Yes. Tearing it down today, right? In John 8, verse 44, it says, Jesus, he says, he says to the, the, the church of the day, he said, you are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth because there was no truth in him. When he speaks a lot, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Whenever we lie, <laughs> think about where that comes from. Think about where it comes from. You know, in James chapter 1, Verse 14 says, every man, every sin comes from lust. Every sin comes from lust. That's what that verse says. Every sin, because we, we conceive it in our heart, and then we do it outside. Because we think that we deserve that, need that, want that, desire that. But our heart doesn't belong to us. It belongs to God. My heart doesn't belong to the devil. It belongs to God. My heart doesn't belong to the world. The things of the world are going to pass away. But behold, right? God is making all things new in us. Amen? Light exposes the lies that we keep in darkness. That we keep in darkness. Stand with me. I want to pray for you. Ooh. Thank you, Lord. How do we thank you for this word? 
We thank you, Lord, for this moment in time. Father, I ask right now that you come and touch us from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. Lord, we take off every religious gar garment today. We take off everything that we think justifies us, Father. And we just stand today in your presence and we're asking, whew, we're asking you, Lord, to come and heal our mind and our heart. Father, we're asking you, even though we have some questions, Father, we're asking you to help us to look past those things and have a desire inside of us to give you glory. Father, forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of our lying hearts and our lying mind. We ask you today to come into our heart fresh and new, to change everything about us, Father, to change our outlook as we look on the inside today for a restoration. Come and purify the container today and put a spring in us, Father. Not a spring in our step, but a spring in us, Lord. Father, that you can move again through us. Father, we want movement, God. We want movement, Lord. Movement, God. Freely as we have received, Father, we want to give it away. Father, let it come now and move through us, Lord. Move through us, God. Even now, Father, as we release things, as we let go of things that we've held on to for too long, Father, we release right now, God, your Holy Spirit. We release it, Father, to the circumstances around us, to our neighbors around us, Father. Father, we are not murderers, Father. We are not liars today, Lord. We're standing in the light today, Lord. Father, come and move, come and move, come and move. Come and move from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. We worship you, Lord. We worship you because you are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You're the great I am. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're, you're the same God, Father, that Abraham met with in the plains, Father. You're the same God, Father, that, that sent, sent your son Jesus, Father. You're the same God who knew that there would be a, a man called Everett. They there, there, there knew there would be a, a man or a woman called whatever your name is. You're the same God who established uh, the perfect timing, God. You're the same God that's going to prepare a way for us. You're the same God that's going to take us all the way through, Father. And we thank you right now, God, for a shift. For a shift. For a shift. For a shift. And so right now, I'm not going to say amen because I'm going to open this altar up. And I want to ask you to come. If you would, come. And just come and stand before the Lord and, and just confess your sins to Him and say, Lord, I want to be different when I leave here. I want, I want what Pastor Everett has. I want, I want what, 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 what he's talking about. I want, I want this spring. I want a filling of the Holy Spirit. And so I'm going to open the altar and I want whoever's hungry, because uh, we read that verse, right? Whoever's a thirst, that He would give us of the water of life freely to anybody that is, a, that is thirsty. And so, Father, we open up this altar right now and we want to honor You in this very moment. Don't walk past the moment looking for some other hope in the future. This is the moment. This is the day. This is the time. Right now. Right here. Right now. And so uh, I'll ask maybe Paula if you'd come and uh, Al or whatever and uh, uh, Andrea, anybody, anybody that's on the leadership, I, I'm going to invite you to come forward. And if someone needs prayer, we want to stand with you in prayer. If, if you need prayer, if you just want to pray by yourself, that's okay. But, but let it happen, okay? Let it happen. Let it happen in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, let it flow. Let the Spirit flow right now. In Jesus' name. 
because he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. He reigns.